for the last 10 years, God has graciously enabled you to stand before Him as a worshipping community and receive from His abundant mercy innumerable blessings that we may live our life in peace, tranquility and joy. I am extremely pleased that I was also invited to be part of this joyous occasion. Samantha was very particular that I should be coming out to be with you. Though many times I am very bold and some other things I am very shy person. I don't usually go to places where I don't really know people there. I need a rather formal introduction for me to meet someone or to be with someone. And therefore though I have been coming to this country since 89, almost every year, and sometimes more than once a year, I never had the opportunity to come to either Houston or to this place. I tried to avoid this visit, but Achan was after me all the time. I said, for some excuse, I should extremely wholeheartedly thank you. Because this visit provided me, provided me with an opportunity to meet new people and to interact with quite a lot of young people particularly who are really concerned of the church, its activities and also its future along with a meaningful spiritual church life for them. And therefore, I express my sincere thanks and gratitude to Achen and all of you for joining him in inviting me. Today is the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. And that text we hear as the Gospel reading comes from the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 14 verses 7 through 11. It's a very simple advice Jesus was giving to his disciples. More than one occasion, he saw disciples worried about who shall be the first among the disciples. And the same question has been in our mind for the several centuries past. Whether Peter or Paul, who was first and who should be first in our denomination. This is most of the time try to tell them it is not to be first, rather it is to be with. But the people did not understand. And he got an, a very good opportunity to teach the people at large about the same question. He 
was invited to a certain feast and he saw people rushing to the most important places for them to occupy that. And perhaps uh, people compare it with uh, what we do back in Kerala when we board buses. Uh, we search around and uh, try to find the most comfortable and honorable position in the bus. Of course, we do that only when there are enough seats. Otherwise, we will be satisfied with what we get. That's a, a, a nature of new people from Kerala. If there is no other contender, we will raise our voice. If there are people around, we will be most subordinate and humble people. And that's why we don't do much of the work required of us in Kerala. But when, once we come out of Kerala, we don't mind doing any kind of manual labor under any person who can be called us. This person went to the most honorable position. And Jesus called people and his disciples and said, You better be humble. Now this probably is a very simple thing to talk about. At the same time, it gives us an opportunity to think of few very profound thoughts. The problem with many of the people uh, when they rush for honorable places is simply they don't know who they are. And what position they should be occupying. Probably this is the greatest awareness a person could ever have. Looking into the mirror and trying to see what he or she really is. Many times we have so much opinion about ourselves and we try to bring it out in front of other people too. Of course, they will be thinking in their mind, I know him, and let him have this one. But we keep on saying what we are not. To know oneself is so important for us to live in this world a decent, valuable, and quality life. Only if we know what I am, we can know others. Most of the time the conflicts, whether in family or in society or as usual in our churches, arise simply because we don't know self and we don't know others. And then a third problem arises. We don't know how to relate. If I know who I am and if I know who the other person would be, I'll be able to relate between. Whenever I conduct holy matrimony, I always tell the bride and bridegroom, you may live tens of years together. But every morning you are facing a new person. Now some people would say, I have been living with this person for the last 10 years. I know him or her in and out. And that begins your problem in marriage. The moment you think that you know the other person, there begins you who you are lack of knowledge of the other person. And when you don't know the other person, you assume that you know. And that is when you start considering with prejudice. 
or preconceived notions. Or take people for granted. Their rights and identity of the other person is slowly denied. And that is why you go to honorable and higher positions by yourself. Because you think you are the most honorable person around. The other one, not so important. This has caused problems in our church, in our community, in our interpersonal relationship, and in many of our families too. Recently there has been a survey in Kerala which said in the southern states of Kerala, southern districts of Kerala, 60 to 80 percent of women are having depression syndrome. They explore into the causes. One of the causes is in southern districts, women got so much education facility and they started having their own independence, economic too. This men could not accept. And there begins ego, clash and conflict. Of course she has a soft side towards children and family. And that puts her in a very difficult position where she cannot say to him, no to him, at the same time she wants to get a little bit of room, space around her. When she considers her children, she cannot say no to him. When she considers her own awareness of the self, she wants to insist on some space around her. And that brings her to a very difficult situation, depression. Now this can happen with children too. In our culture, children are not so much accounted of. Now they are to be very obedient and many times I have said and I strongly believe that the word obedience need to be removed from our dictionaries. It's a very wrong word. To be obedient. And that projects the old feudal system. Somebody sits up there and commands and everybody should be obeying them. Rather a participatory lifestyle will never require a word like Many of the problems in our churches arise because we don't consider others. My opinion should be the last and the most important opinion. If others would not recognize it, I will, just like the MLAs in Kerala Assembly do, walk out and form another congregation. Any one in this country with 10 or 15 people can form an incorporation for themselves. <coughs> and so we have mushrooming of congregations, not because they are required, rather because we want the most honorable position or honorable seat in the community. I need to be heard, that's a good thing. But at the same time when you say, I only need to be heard, then we have a problem. To understand the other person is even more difficult than understanding self. To accept that person as he or she is. Most of the time we look at people through our own colored glass and tries to bring them around. Now usually back in Kerala, children are always advised 
Why can't they become one like that sari, the next door? Now, of course, everybody knows that sari's parents are not the parents of this Rita. And now this fellow had five essence appearances and two books stitched together. Still, he wants her daughter to be first in the class. Just like Sari is. Nobody can be like another person. Now Jesus once was walking along and Peter in his eagerness went after him and asked, what shall happen to this fellow, this John who is always after you? And Jesus said, my dear of business. If I want him to be alive till I come back, what's for him? You do what is required of him. Simply Peter did not understand John. So to enter into the self of another person is a very difficult thing to do. And therefore many people stop halfway through and then assume that I know that person. Most of the time we don't know. That creates problems in families, in communities, and anywhere we come together for interaction. If this person who went out to get the most honorable seat had ever considered the fact that there are other people invited and consider them as honorable people, he would never go to occupy the most honorable place. He failed to do that. And Jesus was addressing that cause. The sustenance of the community is based on mutual respect and acceptance. Many times this doesn't happen in our families. We have culturally inherited class distinctions. He shall be higher and she shall be second and they shall be in the bottom. And then participation becomes very difficult because each person do not know what to do with their lives and what to do in participation. Only a mutual understanding will help people to work together. The beauty and strength of Jesus' ministry in this world was that Jesus was in perfect understanding with his Father. And that he expresses before the two of Lazarus. He said, God, I know that you listen to me. And I know you honor me. But these people, they don't know. And therefore, do what I request you to do and let them understand who we are. The same thing he repeatedly told his disciples and people around him. I and my father are one. Even after Jesus' resurrection and ascension, the people started arguing about it. How can the son and father be one. But Jesus said, I and my father are truly one. If not, I would have told you. Now this is the problem. Many times the relationship patterns are far away from our understanding. How to relate between? How a husband could relate to his wife? How his wife could relate to his husband. Now we have a lot of confusion back home in Kerala regarding this. And I am sure those who came from Kerala, no matter where they live, still do have a lot of problems regarding that. And that caused disintegration of communities, families, and the even churches. And that is what Jesus is addressing here. Look at other people. Accept them as they are. 
try to respect the earth and try to make a bridge between them. Of course, perfect understanding is not easy. And therefore, every moment, every day, we will be trying hard to make this possible. So I said earlier, when I conduct matrimonial ceremony, I will tell them, you get up early in the morning and look at the eyes of your husband or wife and see a new person. Try to address that. It's not the person who went to bed last night that is in front of you. It's a new person. A lot of biological change, a lot of emotional change certainly would have happened during that eight or nine hours or sometimes five hours. <coughs> and address that and try to relate, make a peaceful family of the neighbors. Jesus tells them, Go to the last place and you will be honored. A simple, humble life will bring honor to people. The readiness to accept others comes from a simple, humble attitude. Uh, this Sunday is the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. The Holy Spirit has been bestowed on the church that the church may have a new culture. The culture of old has gone rather the culture of new has come in. The culture that Jesus wanted inculcate in the world or re-establish the old culture Jesus or God established at the time of creation. Let us pray to God that he may continue to renew the Holy Spirit in us, that we may grow in understanding and try to learn about ourselves, about others, and about our relationship in the personal. Once again, thank you all for this opportunity to be with you during these days. And talk to you, listen to you, and to enjoy many of your very lovely, homely reception and all your care concern. Thank you and God bless you.